Travel consideration provided by. With less moderate to severe eczema, why hide your skin? If you can help heal your skin from within. With Dupixin, adults saw long-lasting, clearer skin and significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. Talk to your doctor about Dupixin. What's something that puts Gwyneth in the mood? <laughs> I mean, have you seen a picture of my husband? It's like, you know, it doesn't take much. Okay. What? Gwyneth? What? Okay, okay. What? Our exclusive with Miss Paltrow talking all things sex, love, and goop. And my new interview with our friend Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. Could season three of Ted Lasso be the last? It Come on be. now. It better not be, Jason. All right. Before we go, congratulations to new dad, Lance Bass. He Aww. and husband Michael officially welcomed twins, Violet Betty and Alexander James, on Wednesday. Yeah, Lance posted their birth certificates on Instagram. Happening now. We're learning more about the woman who was swept away by floodwaters and the five-year-old who was recovered yesterday. And the battle over the new abortion law in Texas continues after a federal appeals court upheld the law yesterday. The next step, the Department of Justice is now taking to block the law next. The much anticipated cold front has already arrived, causing showers and storms. I'll have an update on radar and let you know what this front means for temperatures tonight and through the weekend. The News at 5 starts right now. And first in five, more than 24 hours after a woman was swept away in floodwaters in East Bear County, her body's been recovered from her submerged vehicle. Family identifying her as Esther Rodriguez Conde, the second person to be pulled from that body of water. Family of the five-year-old girl whose body was recovered yesterday tells KSAT 12 her name is Alyssa Lehman. Tiffany Wirtz joins us live from the area of that recovery near North Graytown Road and FM 1518. That family must be devastated. Tiffany, who did you speak with out there? Ursula, Steve, the man we spoke with says he is the ex-husband of Esther. He says his daughter and nephew were also in the car with her. And while he is thankful they're kids are safe. He is completely devastated what happened with Esther. Now Cruz Gomez says Esther Rodriguez Conde was 52 years old. He says she lived near this area where this all happened. Sheriff Javier Salazar says they recovered her body just before 2 p.m. Gomez says his daughter who is seven years old and his nephew who is about four or five years old were in the car with her. Both made it out safely. He says his daughter told him about the terrifying moments in the water. She said two men opened the door and let them out. She's doing bad. She's psychologically not doing well all night. There were many agencies involved in the recovery efforts. Officials say once they found the water level safe today, this afternoon divers removed the body from the vehicle. Sheriff Salazar reminds people to stay away from low water crossings and to remember to pay attention to the barricades placed in certain locations. Reporting from the east side, Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Tiffany. More rain adding to the trouble on already flooded roads. First responders helping a stalled vehicle along I-10. It's the access road, I-10 near Vance Jackson. And that is where a woman got stuck in the high waters. She appears to be all right and was speaking with an officer after this. So will that rain stick around? Let's check in with Adam Kasky for what's expected tonight and through the weekend. Adam, it looks like it's just moved over to the east. Well, it has. It's shifted eastward. It's starting to weaken quite a bit in and around Bear County as it moves out of Bear County. This is along the cold front that's moving through town. Now, the good news is for outdoor activities this evening, this is it. You get the rain, it moves out. Other than a few straggler little isolated showers behind the main batch, this is coming to an end and evening activities will be okay. You just have to worry about a few other things this evening, basically just some gusty winds, 30 to 40 miles per hour. But right now you see the batch, main batch of moisture and rainfall has really weakened significantly over the past hour as the cold fronts cut underneath it. Now east side of San Antonio moving out of Kirby and even 
just kind of surrounding China Grove, right along I-10 and 1604 there, right near Green Road. Uh, that's where we have the heavy rain left over stretching down toward Calaveras Lake. That's moving out of town. Floresville looks like you'll get clipped by this downpour within about 10 minutes. And then north, northern and central Atascosa County has this batch of heavy rainfall. A little bit of lightning and thunder, so some lightning delays possible. Charlotte up toward Pleasanton and Jordanton as well, but that's just now, probably within the next 45 minutes, then it moves out as this is progressive. And again, behind it, you're going to clear out actually good rainbow making weather. There's some rainbows out there. Keep your back to the sun and you may see the rainbow once you start to clear out. So that's moving out. The cold front's going to affect us in terms of wind, temperatures, humidity, and a much cooler weekend on the way. So we're going to talk about that. But again, main thing is this evening, once the rain hits and moves through, you're in the clear. All right, Adam, thanks very much. Still watching some high water. Even after that rain moves through, you're still going to have uh, some incidents like we're seeing. Uh, Steve and Ursula were telling you about uh, I-10 a little bit earlier. This is the view from I-10 at uh, Wurzbach here, and you can see uh, crews still on the scene checking uh, this out, actually zooming in now. So that high water on the road and people navigating around that right now. You see uh, the crews there uh, working uh, on that there. So uh, let's go to some other looks at the area. This is going to be 281 at the quarry, a heavy line of traffic there. So just showing you what's going on. These are our regional travel times. I'll take you 61 minutes, so more than an hour to come into town from New Braunfels. 51 minutes coming in on 281, and this is going outbound. Those times look a little better. Remember, turn around, don't drown. Don't drive through flooded streets. Don't drive around the barricades. Make sure your windshield wipers are in working order. Uh, leave the stalled vehicles in flooded areas. And if you're on a highway, a Texas highway 210, 732 hero. So let's take another look at Transguide. Uh, this is going to be I 10 at medical here. You can see that snarled traffic there. So still some major traffic problems, even though most of the rain is moving out of the San Antonio area. We'll be here to watch it. Steve Ursula. Thank you, Samuel. We got some breaking news just into the case at 12 newsroom. CPS Energy's chief operating officer resigning effective immediately. Fred Bonniewell steps down just days after def a defender's investigation revealed a flurry of personnel and, send and spending complaints against the executive. Those complaints resulted in little to no disciplinary action being taken against him. Bonniewell reported for making an ethnically insensitive comment during a 2018 work meeting and had been turned in multiple times over a 15 month period for possible misuse of his corporate purchasing card. Bonniewell placed on administrative leave on Monday. CPS officials declined to release additional details about his resignation. We've got some big news on abortion in the state of Texas. The Department of Justice now asking the Supreme Court to block the new abortion law here while legal challenges play out. The news comes one day after a federal appeals court decided to uphold the ban once again after it had been temporarily blocked by a district court judge. The controversial law bans abortions in Texas after six weeks of pregnancy. It also allows for anyone to file a lawsuit against those who assist women in getting an illegal abortion. A formal date for a Supreme Court petition has not yet been set. She helped hide an eight month old's death. Now she'll spend the next few years in prison. We have an update on the case of King J. Davila, 48 year old Angie Torres, sentenced to eight years in prison. She's the cousin of Christopher Davila, who was sentenced to 40 years earlier this year after accepting a plea deal on a charge of injury to a child causing serious bodily injury or death intentionally or knowingly. Davila, Torres and Beatriz Sampaio, who's Christopher Davila's mother, all connected to this case. You might remember Little King Jay reported kidnapped in January of 2019. His body found a few days later on the northeast side. He'd been buried in a backpack. Sampaio currently remains free on bond while she awaits trial. We have an update now on the search for a murder suspect. 30 year old Evan Arend held is now in police custody. According to San Antonio police, he surrendered in Dallas. Held was wanted in connection with the murder of his 31 year old girlfriend, Sarah Silva. She died on Wednesday at a home in the 1200 block of El Monte Boulevard. Investigators say that she was shot during an argument with Held. 
A 71-year-old woman who was also shot apparently is going to be okay. An update on a fatal crash that left one man dead on Wednesday. The medical examiner identifying that pedestrian as 29-year-old Joshua Scoggs. He was hit Monday evening while crossing the access road near I-35 in Tejasco. He was hit by a driver exiting the roadway. The driver did stop to help Scoggs, but was pronounced dead at the scene. Almost all of us saw it. This week's rain, a reminder of how much flooding and drainage is still a concern, even in the city limits. And some council members frustrated that the city is not doing enough to address the $3.1 billion worth of work it still has to make in drainage and flood control improvements. Garrett Berger talked with two of those council people about what they want to see done. When all I hear from my constituents is their concerns about drainage, flooding, and how it impacts their foundation. A flood of frustration during Wednesday's council briefing as several council members pushed for a greater share of the $1.2 billion bond program to go toward basic infrastructure like drainage. It's a conviction that Wednesday night's downpours did little to wash away. Our neighborhoods are severely underwater when it rains, and we need to ensure that we're meeting the needs of our neighborhoods. The bond proposal staff presented to council had $150 million for drainage. Yes. District 7's Anna Sandoval thinks that should be $200 million. I think it's a reasonable improvement from what we had, uh, from what we have right now, and just eyeballing some of the other projects and what I think we'll be able to, to negotiate. That's, that's my target right now. Her District 7 constituent, Osvaldo Perez, also thinks drainage and flood control projects are important, having seen some flooding issues in the more than 30 years he's lived near Sealing Park. You know, I had to throw everything in the front door to stop the water going in. You know, that was pretty bad. Though excess water is still a concern in the area, Perez says things haven't been as bad in the past 20 years or so. He also thinks there's been some improvements since the latest phase of expanding the ceiling channel next to him. Okay. City staff are still tweaking the bond program based on the conversation at Wednesday's council meeting. A set of council appointed committees will tackle the bond program next. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. We are four months shy of the four year anniversary of the deadly shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Today, we've learned the suspect in that case, Nicholas Cruz, Plans to plead guilty to all charges. 17 people killed at Stoneman Douglas back in February of 2018. The suspect who previously pleaded, pleaded not guilty faces 17 counts of premeditated first degree murder, 17 counts of first degree attempted murder. He's expected to formally change his plea next week. If you got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, it might be time for a booster. Today, the FDA advisory panel unanimously approving boosters for all adults. The recommendation is to get a second dose at least two months after the first. The FDA will now consider the committee's recommendation. Then the CDC vaccine advisors are going to be asked to consider it as well. The FDA authorized Moderna's booster shot yesterday. Pfizer's booster has also been authorized for some vulnerable groups. Working out isn't just good for your physical health, it's good for your mental health as well. No gym though? No problem. The equipment you can use at home, that'll get the job done and won't break the bank. Next. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Brought to you by Toyota. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. Fire is one of nature's four elements, so candles are very important for any ofrenda. The glow of the candle is believed to help guide back the spirits to the world of the living. Placed along the altar's bottom level or entrance, they create a welcoming path for your loved one. More are usually placed around the altar to not only illuminate, but to honor the souls of the forgotten. Maybe a great, great tia that you never knew wants to pay you a visit. But don't burn the house down, so keep one of these around. New at five, budget-friendly home workouts. Sales of home exercise equipment have soared over the past year and a half. Is some of it coming with big claims, promises, and price tags? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with which ones may be worth your sweat and your money. 
When you hear exercise bike, chances are you think of Peloton. With a big touch screen and huge selection of live and on-demand classes, Peloton has its fans and a splurgy price tag of nearly $1,500. It's the best exercise bike Consumer Reports tested, but you can still get a great cycling workout without the Peloton. You can buy an exercise bike that's a third the cost of a Peloton, sign up for the Peloton membership at $12.99 a month, and use your smartphone or tablet. A more affordable one they recommend is the finer form indoor exercise bike for $500. To get some strength training into your home workout, dumbbells are a smart option. Adjustable dumbbells are very flexible. Using a pin, dial, or lever, you can easily change the weight you're using. CR says one good buy is the Core Home Fitness Adjustable Dumbbell Set for $350. Also key for a home gym, a yoga mat for all kinds of floor exercises. For multiple needs, CR suggests the Pro Source Fit Trifold Folding Exercise Mat. Whether it's yoga, strength training, or cardio, there are plenty of apps that can help you at home, too. Apps like Apple Fitness Plus, Peloton, and Equinox Plus are just a few to check out. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. All right, there's really no doubt when that front came through today because the, the skies just opened up for a big part of the viewing area. They did, and now we're actually starting to clear out a little bit, especially when you look off to the west. We're looking east here, basically on the back end of the storms as they move out of town. Uh, but off to the west, we actually have some sunshine. You know what has my attention? Tell me. 72. I knew it. It yes. was not that when I got to work today. No, and temperatures have rebounded a little bit since the rain moved through, but overall we uh, are going to see temperatures falling quite a bit. So weather headlines, the rain is ending around San Antonio and even anywhere north and west of San Antonio. Still some lingering showers and storms out there east of town and south. We'll take a look at those in a moment. But once the rain moves through, you're done. And then the, sh the focus really shifts to the wind. It's going to be windy tonight through tomorrow morning. Much cooler this weekend. I mean, we're talking fall like conditions. So here's the forecast for this evening. By 8 o'clock, the rain well south and east of San Antonio. We're talking along the coastal plain at that point. Otherwise, a clear sky later on tonight. It's just the wind will have those gusts up to about 30 to 40 miles per hour. So you're going to really notice that. Okay, here's a look at the radar over the past hour. This is a one hour animation. Looking around San Antonio, a few little spritzes and sprinkles left over, but the heavy rain is out. Once you're on the backside, you're good to go. Seguin, you're on the backside, you're good to go. Geronimo up to New Braunfels, San Marcos, Luling. We have some heavy rainfall in Gonz or near Gonzales in western Gonzales County, and that concerns me because of all their flooding that they had the other night. Luckily, this isn't too organized and it's progressive. So right now, we don't have any flash flood warnings out to the east, but we still have the river flood warnings in Gonzales County. So something to keep in mind that it's like pouring water on concrete right now in Gonzales County. Atascosa County, that's where we have some heavy rain and thunderstorms moving through. These are moving to the southeast at 20 miles per hour. Charlotte, Charlotte up to Jordanton, Pleasanton. A little bit of lightning associated with it. Those white lines indicate individual lightning strikes. But again, all progressive at about 20 miles per hour. Pearsall, Heavy rain is starting to move out, so conditions will start improving there for evening activities. Again, this is progressive. That's good. Once it's out of your area, you're good to go the rest of this evening. Take a look at the wind gusts. OK, this isn't the steady wind. Winds are steady at about 15 miles per hour, but Gonzalez gusting to 31, 23 miles per hour, New Braunfels and Hondo gusting to 28. We're expecting those wind gusts to increase. Here's our future cast for it. 8 o'clock wind gusts around 30 miles per hour. Later tonight, midnight, wind gusts between 35 and 40 miles per hour. So your sensitive decorations outside, your Halloween decorations, uh, either take them in for the night or deflate them. If they're inflatables, obviously deflate them. Saturday morning, still gusty winds between 30 and 40 miles per hour, and then tapering off a little bit by tomorrow afternoon. Dew points plummeting, still humid. Locally, dew point is 64, but look where the wind is coming from, the hill country. Dew points in the 50s and 40s. We're going to sweep away all that humidity gradually through the night tonight. So everybody's going to get a break from the humidity this weekend. Look at the dew points this weekend, 40s. And then even Monday, dew point near 50 degrees. But the humidity returns by next Tuesday. So a lack of humidity, cooler temperatures on the way, and some gusty winds as we transition to those cooler temperatures. 
Speaking of temperatures, rain cooled air 74 in San Antonio, 76 Kerrville. Del Rio actually had the cold front move through, but 91 because of sunshine. Let's fast forward to tomorrow morning. Widespread 50s from 50 in Fredericksburg and Rock Springs to 55 in San Antonio. Gonzales, Carrizo Springs, 57 for morning temperatures. And we don't see temperatures rise a whole lot by the afternoon. We're thinking about 73 in New Braunfels, 73 in Hondo and 73 in San Antonio. So this weekend, a lot of sunshine tomorrow, still a little gusty and breezy. 50s in the morning, low 70s by the afternoon. Look at Sunday morning. Woo -hoo, 47 degrees to start the day and still very fall like Sunday afternoon, 73. Humidity's back and we warm up a bit Tuesday. Got to make that pumpkin spice. It's better. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, and one of the guys who's experiencing this front, you know, in out in the elements is our own Greg Simmons. He joins us now from the Dragon Den, Greg. That's right. You know what got me when I got here besides the weather that is now cleared out was the, what it says on the press box, Dragon Pride, the home of 1990 Heisman Trophy winner Ty Detmer. That's how long it's been. That's how old I am. But we're here tonight for the fourth annual Fire and Armor Bowl between the Southwest Dragons, Southwest Legacy Titans. Coming up, a live preview from the Dragon Den and the Spurs' final preseason game. We'll get you ready. Coming up. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to the Dragon Den for the big game at our big game coverage tonight. That's where the Southwest Dragons play host of Southwest Legacy Titans in the fourth annual Fire and Armor Bowl. Now, many believe this could very well be for the district championship in 14-5A Division I. Since both teams come into this game undefeated in district, the Titans are 5-1 overall, 2-0 in district, with their only loss of the season against Floresville, 44-41. The Dragons are 5-2 overall, 3-0 in district, with their losses, their first two games of the season to Central Catholic and Floresville as well but since that time the dragons have been breathing fire winning five straight and tonight hope to get even with the titans in this series it's very exciting just because it's a rival game there's just many things that could happen and they're going to be their best game we're going to be in ours so it's going to be a very exciting game we've known these guys for a long time going back to like middle school so it's always been like a rivalry between us since ever we, when we split so it's going to be a tough one it all kicks off here at Dragon Stadium, 7 p.m. Southside will be in Rio Grande City at 7.30. Brennan and O'Connor over Ferris at 7. Harlan and Holmes at Gustafson. Steele be in their neighborhood rivalry of their own against Clemens at Lynn Hoff. Smith and Valley travels to South Sand. East Central at Judson, a must win for the Rockets if they want to keep their playoff hopes alive. Wagner, New Bravos, Alamo Heights at Medina Valley and Casterville. Kerrville Tivy travels to Bernie to take on champion. Reagan and MacArthur Heroes. Churchill and Lee at Comalander. Highlands Lanier over at Alamo. Brackenridge and Kennedy. Edgewood Veterans Stadium. Seguin will be at McCullum at Harlandale Memorial. Harlandale will travel to Buda to take on Johnson at Shelton Stadium. TMI at San Antonio Christian School and Houston St. Thomas against Antonian at 7. Our big game coverage road trip has Larry and photographer Eddie Latigo headed to Lavernia first tonight to see if the Bears can beat the Bulldogs of Somerset. Then it's down to Florizel to watch the Tigers and Lockhart. And then over to Poe to see if the Pirates can raid George West. And don't forget our San Antonio Spurs wrap up their preseason tonight when they play host to the Houston Rockets in the AT&T Center for they open their regular season next Wednesday against Orlando. And good luck to the Astros in game one of the ALCS. Don't forget to join us on the BGC app for all the live Texas Sports Productions games tonight. Follow us on Twitter for the latest scores. And, of course, on the night beat for all the highlights. Live from Dragon Stadium, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. Great night of football. Thank you. We'll be right back. So parts of San Antonio is still under a flash flood of warning that's within the green box that you see there in the west side and even downtown San Antonio. Otherwise, the rain is done with here in town, surrounding communities southeast of San Antonio. You've got a little bit of time left, otherwise clearing this evening, cooler this weekend and fall like. We'll have more details at 6.